Cloaking. The word has been the darling of science fiction buffs for the past 40 years. Invisibility is a concept everyone has dreamed about, but the idea has never carried much weight in real life until now. Introducing Modi Friedman, Alex Gaeta, Alessandro Fari, and Yoshitomo Akawachi. Four Cornell researchers who worked tirelessly in the depths of Clark Hall and recently made headlines when they announced that they had successfully cloaked something in time. How does someone get into the cloaking business? Good question. I was asked to comment on a theoretical paper um, that discussed the potential for temple cloaking. The, the way they proposed to have it done, though, it didn't seem feasible. And so we started thinking about other ways of doing it, and we came up with an idea that we tried it, and it worked. This rat pack of refraction can't make someone vanish, but they have proved they can create a cloaking effect by manipulating the speed of light through lenses, which alters the magnetic field, thus causing invisibility for 110 nanoseconds. Now this might not satisfy the sci-fi imagination, but that doesn't mean it's not useful. Maybe in some with higher power, and we can go even to microsecond energy. Um, but we won't be able to hide a person if this is what you are asking. But uh, you can hide a lot of data, and sometimes it's even better. This data hiding is uh, it's important in our society that there's like. Data is like the main, it's the main resource, and the faster you can process, the faster you can uh, change and modify. If you can hide and reroute, that has a uh, practical application, even more than just hiding a person. While sci-fi style cloaking may be light years away, Alex reminds us that major breakthroughs like that all originate from somewhere, and this could be the birth of the greater concepts. The part is we've shown the at least for a short period of time, you can sort of hide something. Um, you know, I, I don't know if this will ever, re you know, really realize itself in terms of hiding a spaceship or a person or anything like that. But, but I think it's a, uh, um, it's a good start. The alumni community has shown great interest in the cloaking research, so we encouraged questions on the alumni Facebook fan page. Dennis Miller, class of '91, asks. I'd like to understand why the gap cannot be expanded infinitely. If it is possible to create a 110 NS gap using two time lenses, wouldn't you be able to get to 220 NS using four? What if a string of properly angled and aligned lenses was formed into a loop? Voila, instant time portal. You cannot do one big time lens is because you have uh, some kind of aberrations. Like when you try to make a very big lens, then it, it won't be a lens, a perfect lens anymore. It's very hard to make big lens good, uh, with good, high quality. Um, so this is actually the, the problem. And if you take small time lens and put them one after the other, um, then still the light will, uh, every time lens is actually taking the light and pushing it to the side. So in time. In time pushing to the side in time. So instead of getting the light all the time, you have a hole. So what will be created in, if you are using a, a lot of time lens, you'll have a small hole, you'll have a lot of, and all the light will be concentrated here. And then you'll have another hole, and another light concentrated, another hole, another. So it won't be like a big hole. You would think the sky is the limit for this brilliant group of physicists. However, even the enormity of this breakthrough doesn't change the fact that the future of their research hangs on their ability to secure additional funding. It depends if we can get uh, funding from uh, some you know, an agency like National Science Foundation. Uh, if, if we can't get additional funding, uh, then probably we can't do too much because we're committed to do other things. In a world where technology changes at a mind-blowing pace, the catalysts for groundbreaking innovations are often lost in the shuffle. But a quick stroll through the hallways of Cornell's physical science buildings, and you'll come face to face with the men and women who are building the world of tomorrow and making it disappear at the same time.